We found out my boyfriend cheated on me with his aunt. Yeah, blood relative. This claim is not my story time. It's on me on Instagram. I knew there was a reason why my boyfriend never dated anybody. He was a bachelor. All the girls wanted to be with him, but he always claimed that he was just too picky. Everything started 14 years ago. He and I are both in our 30s now. I was introduced to this friend group when I moved with my parents to a new city. This friend group was very, very close. Even though we all went to different high schools and colleges, we all hung out every single day. One of them being my future boyfriend. The running joke was that he was with everybody, but with nobody at the same time. Because no girl could ever tie him down long enough to be his girlfriend. Which is a horrible thing in and of itself. But over time, I started developing a crush on him. It was inevitable. He's extremely handsome, very funny. He's an athlete and he looks like a Greek god. I knew he was a poster child for a player. So I never really wanted to chase him like that. Until he chased me. That's when everything changed. Suddenly, we were hanging out privately without the friend group. In fact, he was planning dates. Texting me, calling me. Even picking me up from work. Things were so good that I wanted to be his girlfriend. When I told him, well, he freaked out. What happens next? You actually will never guess. You have to go to part two. I found out my boyfriend cheated on me with his aunt. After he ghosted me for two months because I wanted something more serious, I started doing some investigating. Things were so good between us, why would he ghost me? Into his mom's house and explained what was happening. That's when she was shocked. She told me that he had confessed to her that he was in love with me and he wanted to make our relationship more formal. He was planning on asking me to be his girlfriend. When I was there though, his aunt was also there. She decides to chime in and say, you need to stop begging my nephew because you're not good enough for him. That's when the two sisters started fighting because one was defending me and the other one was telling me I wasn't good enough. As you can imagine, I was totally affected by this. I felt horrible. I have two of his relatives saying two different things. And for two whole months, I had no contact with him. One night, I'm in bed and I start to remember things. His aunt would always call him when he was with me, especially if she knew that he was at my apartment. She would text him all the time. Always ask her for favors, like go wash my car, get me groceries. It's like she was always trying to find a way to get him away from me. The next day, I did something crazy. Straight up showed up to her house and asked her why she didn't like me. And what she said was so vile. I still can't believe it. Part three is up. I found out my boyfriend cheated on me with his aunt. Then I went to confront his aunt for telling me that I wasn't good enough for him. She told me the most vile things. She started listing off all the things about my physical appearance that are not good enough for him. That I have acne. That I have cellulite. That I'm too short. That I'm not very fit. And that I have a receding hairline. She wanted to hurt my feelings so bad. And the first thing that came to mind was, are you jealous because I'm with your nephew? Or are you really being protective? I'm not even exaggerating. She slapped me so hard I fell backward. And then she said the most disgusting thing ever. She said, you are no match for me. I actually felt sick to my stomach. This is when I get a call from my boyfriend. He apologizes and says that he does want to be with me. In my desperation, I said yes. He came to my apartment and we made up. And that's when I told him everything that his aunt said. All he said was, don't listen to her, she's crazy. Then he takes me to his mom's house for lunch and his aunt is there. Gets even worse. Part four is up. I found out my boyfriend cheated on me with his aunt. When we got to his mom's house for dinner, his aunt was already there. When she saw me, she pretended like nothing happened. She tried to give me a hug and a kiss. But I backed away. For the next hour, she was hanging off of my boyfriend's neck. She kept saying she wanted to cuddle him. I finally took my boyfriend to the backyard and asked him what was happening. That's when he confesses everything. He had been doing it with his aunt for a year. That she was obsessed with him. And that she hated me so much that she wanted to unalive me. Words can't even describe how I felt. That's when I simply walked away. I told him to never contact me again and that this was not healthy for me and that he needed to get away from his aunt and seek help. I do keep in contact with his mom now. She told me that he's going to therapy and that they cut off her sister. He calls me every day, but I'm too heartbroken for him. At this point, I don't even care that he cheated. It's all the mental trauma that he has. Am I being selfish? Should I give him another chance? I just don't think I can deal with that kind of trauma. Story time, my best friend set me up to get jumped. So a little background information. I was 14 at the time and a freshman in high school. And I've been best friends with this girl who we're going to call Lindsay for a little less than a year. Which is not a long time, but it felt like we've known each other since birth. The only annoying thing about her was that she desperately wanted to be popular. To the point where she would embarrass herself just to get the popular kids to like her. Which obviously never worked. Fast forward to high school, Lindsay meets a group of senior girls. Who I guess you would call the Hot Cheeto Girls. And she immediately starts dressing and acting just like them. And she started acting super weird towards me. Well, eventually Lindsay introduces me to them. And I actually liked them. I thought that they were funny and nice. But the problems began whenever they started paying more attention to me than they were Lindsay. You could tell that she was pissed off with this because she was dressing and acting like them trying to fit in. Meanwhile, there's me who didn't change anything about myself for them to like me. Fast forward, the one night I'm on the phone with Lindsay and she goes, I don't think I like them anymore. They're super rude. And then she told me that the main girl of the group, Sierra, was talking shit on me and wanted to fight me. Like Part 2 about how my best friend set me up to get jumped. 
So like I said, she told me that the main girl of the group, Sierra, wanted to fight me. And then Lindsay says, yeah, we should fight her instead. And I told her I was not going to do that because I am not a fighter. Never have been, never will be. And then she goes, well, you might want to rethink that because she really wants to fight you. Obviously, I wasn't rethinking shit. Instead, I just decided to distance myself from her. And I guess that Sierra had been talking about how I distanced myself and how it was weird. And Lindsay saw this as the perfect opportunity for her to become their new favorite. And she goes, oh, well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I think the reason why she's being distant is because she's talking to your man. Because Sierra's also been complaining about how her boyfriend's been cheating on her again and she would always go after the girl fast forward i'm in the bathroom the one day and all of them walk in and then sears tells me that she wants to fight the teacher walked in and literally saved my life because all four of them were standing there ready to fight me so then i text her and ask her why and she told me about what Lindsay said obviously i told her it wasn't true and the next day she ended up jumping Lindsay because Lindsay was the one talking to her boyfriend not only that but she was literally trying to become sierra it was super weird Anyway, so after this, I stopped being friends with all of them, and whenever Sierra asked me why I stopped being friends with them, even though she thought that everything was squashed, I was like, listen, you're a really cool girl, and I think that you're super funny, and I would love to be friends with you, but honestly, I don't want to be friends with somebody who's literally going to physically harm me over a rumor that they heard instead of just talking to me about it first to make sure it's even true. Surprisingly, she was fine with it. She was like, okay, that's valid. I'm sorry about that, which I was surprised that she didn't want to fight me because I didn't want to be friends with her. But anyways, now if we see each other, we'll talk to each other, but other than that, I try to keep my distance. I caught a man living in my basement. Disclaimer, this is a scary story. 12 months ago, I was finally able to escape my abusive husband. I literally had to hide from this man. We went through a horrible divorce, but the judge ruled in my favor because I had so much evidence. At the time, all I wanted to do was go back and live with my parents. My parents are the most loving, logical, reasonable people I know. And after being in a relationship with my husband for four years, receiving all the abuse that I did, I just wanted to be with them. So I moved back in with my parents and everything was fine. Soon after that, my parents told me they wanted to retire and move to the Philippines. But I knew that I didn't want to go there, so I decided to stay in the U.S. That meant I had to find my own apartment. What I ended up finding was a cute little cottage outside of the city. I even decided to quit my job and to start writing. And I knew that I could afford to live off of my savings. I was living that cottage core life. I even bought clothes. I was baking bread. I was even making my own cheese. Life was too good. I felt like I was living in a fairy tale and something bad was about to happen. But I could never even dream of what was about to happen to me. One day I came home to find my door open. Part 2 is up. You have to go watch it. I caught a man hiding and living in my basement. Disclaimer, this is a scary story. Now that I was living in my cottage, I felt completely safe. One day I went to pick some berries. I know it sounds like a fairy tale. When I came home, my front door was open about a foot or so. My stomach dropped because I knew that I had locked the door before I left. When I opened the door, everything looked normal inside. So I decided to calm myself down. I called my parents and I told them what happened. They told me that maybe the wind blew the door open or that maybe I just simply forgot to lock it, which all of that could have been true. The following day, I was making a strawberry shortcake. I went outside to my garden and to pick some mint and that's when i happened to look at the basement window it had a full handprint on it this didn't scare me immediately because the lady i rented the cottage from she said that nobody had been down there in years I grabbed the flashlight and opened the door to the basement and that's when i smell something intense body odor the most intense body odor you could ever imagine and that's when i knew there was someone down there i walked halfway down the steps and when i pointed my flashlight to a corner i saw a man sitting in a squatting position and i knew who that was it was my ex's best friend you have to go to part three this is when i pointed my flashlight and i saw a man squatting in the corner in nothing but underwear and i recognized him as my ex's best friend and i shout out his name to him and he says hey i say what are you doing here that's when he confessed that my husband let him in that him and my ex-husband had both been living in my basement and that they would each take turns living there he told me that my ex-husband was obsessed with me and that he would constantly listen to my conversations and watch me do everything and that my ex paid him to watch me while he couldn't he even told me that my ex-husband would come up at night and watch me sleep then he told me that my ex gave him permission to do whatever he wanted to me if he ever got caught and he said you better go upstairs right now i ran up the stairs locked the door behind me called the cops and my parents immediately my parents jumped on a plane from the philippines back to the u.s the police came and arrested him but they never found my ex-husband both in the military so they have training cops found weapons and a cell phone full of videos of me videos my husband would take of me while i showered and did everything i moved to the philippines with my parents and i've never seen them again story time about how my boyfriend got my best friend pregnant so a little background information, I was around 16 or 17 at this time, and I was in 11th grade. 
and I met my best friend who we're going to call Jasmine whenever I was nine. We met through our moms because my mom worked at a detox hospital and her mom, Carol, was a patient there. And Jasmine has a brother who we're going to call Zane, who's a year older than us. Well, at the start of 11th grade, I was not popular, but Jasmine was. In my art class, I had met this kid who we're going to call Warren. Warren wasn't popular at all, and he was super shy, so we hit it off. Well, fast forward, in the middle of the year, I joined the lacrosse team with Jasmine, but I was super upset because I felt like we were drifting apart. Now, Jasmine had a lot of boyfriends. Me, on the other hand, the only kid that I liked was Warren, and we started dating. But it definitely felt like Jasmine had a thing for Warren because she would flirt with him all the time. And whenever I asked her if she did, she said that I was overreacting because I was on my period. Like, okay. Fast forward to our last lacrosse game of the year. Our school decided to have a sleepover, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend got my best friend pregnant. So like I said, after the last lacrosse game, we were having a sleepover for the 11th and 12th graders. And Jasmine and Warren didn't have cars, so I drove them. But I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit thrown off. Because Jasmine showed up in this mini skirt and this tiny tube top. Meanwhile, it's like 55 degrees outside. Well, fast forward, I go and walk down to the bathroom and then I see Jasmine coming out of the boys' bathroom with her skirt partially unzipped. So after she walks away, I go in there and I see Warren zipping up his pants. Of course, whenever I confronted him, he denied it. So then I asked Jasmine and then she casually said that they had been hooking up in the bathroom. Fast forward a little bit later, I get a text from her saying, emergency, I think I'm pregnant. So I go to her house and she tells me that the baby's Warren's. So I smack her and then she tries to fight me, but I'm not a fighter, so I ran. Fast forward, somehow Zane and I start dating. Fast forward, the one day I'm at his house and out of the corner of my eye, I see Jasmine running towards me about to jump on me. So I move out of the way. She lands on her stomach. Then we see a ton of blood and she goes to the hospital and she lost the babies. Story time about how I found out my husband was hooking up with men off of Craigslist. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. My husband and I have been married for five years. This man is the most prudish person I have ever met in my entire life. He never curses. He does not drink. Basically, he's never done anything naughty in his life. When we met, he was the perfect candidate for me. My parents are very religious and very strict. When they saw the way my husband was, basically super uptight, never wanting to do anything fun, they insisted that I marry him. So basically, this is all my parents' fault. To be honest with you guys, I never really was was super attracted to him but i knew that he would be a good provider he's pretty high up in the company he works for and he makes north of three hundred thousand dollars per year but i do own two of my own businesses so it's not like i need him to survive but my parents insisted on me marrying somebody who was already well off and of course one of my dreams is to become a mother so i need a man who's going to be able to provide for me and my kids especially when i'm pregnant so we ended up getting married is there passion and chemistry not so much but we did have a good time and he would make me laugh we essentially became really good friends up until I found some stuff on his laptop. Part two is that. Part two of how I found out my husband was hooking up with men off of Craigslist. Disclaimer is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. One day while I was working from home, I needed to get on his laptop to check our cameras. I just got a new set of security cameras for our house. I needed to make sure that they were all working. I opened his laptop, typed in the password, and it was wrong. I always had the same password for the past five years. I didn't bother texting him. Instead, I tried to guess. And because I know this man so well, I guessed it in the first try. But as soon as I log in, there's about five Craigslist windows open, all with similar titles. Male looking for male. Male interested in male company. This literally shook me to my core. You're telling me that I'm married to a gay man and that he's hooking up with men off of Craigslist? That's when I went ahead and checked his email, only to find that he had been sending pictures and other things to these men. Not only that, but he had met with two of them. I instantly printed out all the evidence. Like I said in part one, I'm not particularly attracted to my husband. I never have been. I really only married him because my parents pressured me into it. Here's what I did. Instead of just asking for a divorce, I wanted to humiliate him. I needed to make him pay. After printing everything out i sent it to his job and i sent it to his parents and my parents part three is up that's when i sent videos of my own husband hooking up with other men to his job my parents and his parents at this point i had been married to a man that i wasn't attracted to for five years only to find out that he was hooking up with other men off of craigslist remember i said in part one how prudish my husband was he always made himself seem like he was the perfect man like he had never done anything bad in his life but let me tell you some of the things i read in those emails and the pictures and the video disgusting no wonder he put off having kids for so long and no wonder he made me get on the pill because he never had the intention of having kids when everyone received their packages my husband called me super upset he said that he had only done it for about a week and that it was just him experimenting and he told me that his job put him on suspension my parents of course stopped speaking to him mother-in-law calls me on the phone and tells me that she had always known that he was gay and apparently they insisted on him not marrying me but he was set on having the perfect wife the perfect life we're obviously getting a divorce now and i'm getting all his money or at least i'm gonna try he's already claiming that i'm obsessed with him so he wants to get a restraining order i need to make him suffer even more how should i do this therefore we'll be up soon story time about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on an all-girls trip
So a little background information, I was 14 or 15 around the time, and it was the summer of my freshman year. So within the last few weeks of my 8th grade year, one of the more popular boys asked me out. And we're gonna call him Carson. I wasn't like super popular at the school, but I was like a medium maybe. But I was raised in a super strict household where the only phone that I pretty much had was one that was able to call 911 and my parents. And I especially was not allowed to be talking to boys. So Carson had the great idea of giving me his old phone, and throughout the summer, I would text him on there. Well, I started to realize him getting really toxic. Anytime that he would see my Snapchat location change, he would be like, where are you going? Why didn't you tell me you were going here? So I started distancing myself a little bit from him. Also because our relationship was just moving way too fast. Within the first month of us dating, he was talking about wanting to marry me. Life for part two. Part two about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on him on an all-girls trip. So like I said, I started distancing myself from him because he became too attached and was just way too toxic. Well, I was also in a lot of clubs in school, and a few of them would require me to go on trips. Well, the one that I went on was an all-girls trip, and before I left, I texted Carson letting him know that I wouldn't have my phone all week. Well, on the last night of my trip, there was a girls and boys dance. There was like a group of boys from a different school that we were meeting up with. And I tried staying back at the cabin, but they wouldn't let me. So we started doing dances that required partners. So I was pretty much forced to dance with one of the boys. Well, when I came back home, I got a hundred texts from Carson calling me a bunch of nasty names, and you can probably guess them. And somebody got a picture of me dancing with one of the boys. And Carson sent it to me and said, we're done. So after that, I just ignored him. And then literally that night at 1 a.m., he was texting me saying, I miss you. Please come back to me. Like for part three. Part 3 about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on him on an all-girls trip. So like I said, I received over 100 messages from him. He got a picture of me dancing with one of the boys and said, we're done. And then at 1 in the morning, he's like, I miss you so much. Please don't leave me. Like, I've been doing so bad while you were gone. So of course, I didn't accept his apology and I just blocked him on all my social media. And the next day, I wake up to messages on my Instagram, my Snapchat, my Facebook. Like, who even uses that? Unless you're talking to family. Well, then Carson decides to tell everybody at my school about how I'm a lying, cheating scumbag. And now, three years later, no good guy from my school wants to date me. So now whenever I'm talking to a guy, I have to make sure that they're not affiliated with Carson in any way. But low-key, I had a really good glow-up, so all the hot boys want to talk to me now. And Carson's pretty much still a scumbag. Story time, my best friend cheated on his girlfriend with me. So a little background information. So Gavin and I have been best friends ever since we were little. We lived in the same neighborhood. And my parents and his grandparents were like pretty close, I guess. But like everybody in our neighborhood was close with each other. And I always had a huge crush on him. And I would try to like subtly tell him that I liked him. But he would always be like, ooh, don't joke with me like that. Like, that's not true. And eventually, I just kind of got the hint that that was his way of telling me, I don't like you. Stop before I tell you in a mean way. So when we were in middle school, he was always having these like two-day relationships with all these girls and everything. And me, not so much because sis didn't have a glow up until she reached like her sophomore year in high school. And the thing was, I wasn't that best friend who would be like, ooh, don't date her like she's ugly or anything like that. Like I would totally respect all of his relationships, even if they were two days long. But he would literally still block me. Well, the one day we were hanging out at his house, like for part two. Part two about how my best friend cheated on his girlfriend with me. So like I said, the one night I was at his house and he was on my phone and he was asking me who all these guys were on my Snapchat. And I told him that I had been talking to them and he was just being a super toxic. He was talking shit on every single one of them. So eventually I started dating this guy, Trey. And after that, he texted me saying that I was gross and everything else. When the next day, he literally got a girlfriend. But weirdly enough, he didn't block me that time. He actually started texting me more saying how him and his girlfriend were so happy together. Da -da 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 -da. And I'm like, him, I would be supportive. Well, the one night at 2 a.m., he came over my house and he was like, I don't have feelings for my girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, then why are you with her? And then he has the nerve to say, don't you get that I like you? Like, really? Well, eventually we cut off all communication and he was still with this girl. Well, the one night he asked me to come over and talk and we ended up doing the nasty. And then he blocked me on everything after he said we should both leave our girlfriends and boyfriends. Well, I ended up telling his girlfriend what we did and they also come to my family cookouts. 
story time about how my boyfriend is abusive to his parents. What should I do? Claire is not my story time. It's on me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been dating for 11 months. Here's a little backstory. We both work at the same company and live very far from our parents. I try to go home once a month since my parents are only two hours away from me. His parents live in a different country. For that reason, I haven't met his parents. But he's met my parents and he's been completely respectful and really nice to them. So I never suspected that he could be abusive to his parents. So here's what happened. We flew over to his parents and they are very rich. His mom is an interior designer and their house is phenomenal. His dad owns a couple of businesses and together they are very wealthy. His parents went to pick us up at the airport and everything was fine until we got to their house. They decided to give me a tour of their ginormous mansion. That's when I noticed that my boyfriend was being kind of rude to them. Every time they would ask me a question, he would answer and be like, duh, she likes pizza. He even asked his mom to stop asking stupid questions. I stopped him in his tracks and in front of his parents I said, why are you being rude to your parents? The look on his parents' face was of shock. And that's when I realized that they had never disciplined him. But then it got worse. Part two is up. Story time about how my boyfriend is abusive to his parents. Disclaimer is now my story time. I said on Instagram. The look on his parents' face when I called him out for being rude to them was complete shock. After they gave me the tour of the house, we decided to sit down for dinner. They are so rich that they have their own chef. That's when the chef comes out and starts serving all the food. And as soon as my boyfriend sees what they served, he grabs his glass of water and bangs it against the table. He looks at both of his parents and says, What the fuck is wrong with you both? The color from their faces drain. That's when they said, I'm sorry, we didn't know he was going to make this. The chef decided to make a really fancy meatloaf. Apparently, he hates meatloaf. Then he said, well, tell him to make something else. His mother gets up and runs to the kitchen and asks the chef to make him a burger because that's his favorite food, which by the way, I never even knew that. He always told me his favorite food was Indian. His mom comes back from the kitchen. Then he looks at me and says, you don't have to eat that shit if you don't want to. I told him that he was being a brat and that I'd be happy to eat the meatloaf. His parents look at me and smile. My boyfriend just gets up from the table and runs away. Can you believe I had to chase after him? Part three is up. Story time about how my boyfriend is abusive to his parents. What should I do? Disclaimer is not my story time. I said I'm on Instagram. That's when my stupid boyfriend runs away from the dinner table. So of course I have to chase him. And of course I'm angry at this point. I ask him why he's being so rude to his parents. Then he literally denies that he just did anything. His words were, you're reading too much into it. My parents are stupid anyway. I looked at him and I said, do you not see the mansion we're standing in? How did two stupid people manage to build this mansion, four businesses, and put you through school? He rolls his eyes at me and says, Jesus Christ, you sound like my parents. I told him that he was a privileged rat. You see, I come from a family where we don't have chefs and we don't have millions of dollars or a mansion. So I appreciate everything my parents did for me. I went back to the dining room and I told his parents it was nice to meet them, but that I could no longer be with their son. That's when his mom started begging me not to leave. It was hard, but I called an Uber and I went home. My boyfriend's been begging me to get back with him. He's trying really hard too. His parents are even offering to pay my student loans. I'm honestly confused now. What should I do? Story time about how I crashed my dad's really expensive car. So a little background information. My mom had just got remarried to my stepdad three years ago. And he was this rich asshole who owned a bunch of food trucks and thought he was the shit. Well, at the time I also had a boyfriend. And we had only been dating for like a month and a half. But my boyfriend would always beg me to let him drive my stepdad's car. And I always said no because that was like his child. Like he had children. He could care less about them. His car was more important. Anyway, so the one weekend my parents are out of town and one of my friends was throwing a graduation party. So that whole day my boyfriend was trying to talk me into taking the car and I already knew where my stepdad hid the keys. So I just decided I wouldn't drink that night and I would just take the car. He kept asking me if he could drive but clearly I said no because this kid literally told me that he crashed the first two cars that he had. So we get to the party, we're having a good time, and one of my friends tells me that everybody's taking pictures with my car outside. Like for part two... Part two about how I crashed my dad's very expensive car. So like I said, everybody's taking pictures of the car, but I decided to let it go at first. I mean, there was one point where I went outside just so that way I could kind of let everybody know, hey, you're taking pictures with my car. Well, half an hour later, my boyfriend and I decided to leave and he's obliterated. Like we probably got 50 feet from her house and then I had to stop the car so that way he could get out and throw up in somebody's yard anyway so he gets in the car we're on the way back to my house and my house was like a 20 minute drive away well we were five minutes from my house at this one intersection i get a green light and i go to make a right and i accidentally hit a car turning out of the bar parking lot so i'm literally freaking the fuck out and my boyfriend's in the seat next to me crying for some reason so the guy in the other car calls the cops 
The cops show up. They call my stepdad and my mom. My boyfriend went to the hospital. He had alcohol poisoning. Well, my boyfriend told his mom that it was all my fault and I'm grounded for six months. This is how I found out my dad was following me on OnlyFans. Disclaimer, it's not my story time. It's not on Instagram. My mom and dad had me when they were really young. My mom was 17 and my dad was 19. For some reason, my mom doesn't like talking about him. So I never really found out exactly how they broke up. All I know is that they stayed together until I was five years old. Something really bad happened and then my mom kicked him out of the house. Like I said, I don't even know what happened. I was 12 years old. He begged my mom to come back and she let him live in the apartment we had But he's pretty much a deadbeat. He didn't help my mom pay for the bills He didn't even want to get a job He even went as far as begging my mom to become a stripper He said that she would make way more money than the job she had She was a secretary at the time when I was 15. He left our house again Never got a bad feeling from him when he was living with us though with a lot of hard work My mom was able to put me through college. I graduated and I got a really good job I bought my mom and me a house and we moved in together then COVID happened and I lost my job Friends suggested I start OnlyFans and I decided to do it I started making a lot more money than I ever thought I would. Some months I was making around $20,000. This one guy would send me $1,000 every single week. In exchange for pictures. Part two is up. This is how I found out my dad was following me on OnlyFans. Disclaimer is not my story time. It's not on my Instagram. So this one guy started sending me $1,000 every single week. In exchange, I would send him private photos. Everything was totally fine until he started asking me questions. He would ask me things like, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite dessert? Because it's OnlyFans, I never really answered honestly. But then one day he told me, you love The Little Mermaid, don't you? And I was like, what? Because The Little Mermaid was my favorite movie as a kid. Watched it at least three times a week when I was a kid. First, I thought it was a cousin playing a joke on me. So I decided to block them. The next day, I get another message. This one says, I remember how you used to love hot dogs. That's when I really shit myself. Because my dad and I would make hot dogs every single Friday. It was our thing together. Like I said, he was a deadbeat, so he couldn't afford anything more than cheap hot dogs. And that's when he said, I have a confession. And before I could reply, he said, I'm your dad. I felt so disgusted. I blocked him and then blocked him from my cell phone too. That's when he sends me a long text message explaining why he signed up to my OnlyFans. He said that he was just trying to get to know me. That all he really wanted was to get me back as his daughter. Then why ask for nudes? Part 3 is up. This is how I found out my dad was following me on OnlyFans. This claim is not my story time. It's sending me on Instagram. As soon as I read his long text message about why he signed up, I once again blocked him. 20 minutes later, there's a knock on my door. Yep, it's my fucking father. Started knocking on the door so hard my neighbors came out. Called 911 and they came within a minute. I live in an area where there aren't too many people. So my house is really easy to find. Saw my dad walk to the backyard and try to get in through the back. That's when a cop stopped him and asked him what he was doing. Then he told the cop that I had invited him over. Then the cop comes to my door and asked me if I had invited him. I told him I didn't. Then I told the cop about OnlyFans. My dad was so ashamed he actually denied it. But of course I had all the receipts. I showed the cop my phone and the cop told him that he needed to leave me alone. He left my house and I didn't have the heart to tell my mom. But later that night I see another person sign up to my OnlyFans. Turns out it was my dad again. This time he was offering me $3,000 for more pictures. Then he confessed that he couldn't help but love me as a woman because I didn't grow up with him. Excuse me sir, you raised me for half of my childhood. Wanted to get a restraining order, but the judge says it's not that easy. So now I'm considering closing my OnlyFans. I don't think it's fair though. What should I do?